Alright, hey guys, 8 by Brian here, and I am back with my monthly flea market and thrift store haul pickup video for everything that I picked up for the month of July. So without any further ado, let's get into it, and I'll get started with miscellaneous. So the first things that I picked up were these two really cool books. They were both a dollar each. They're by Gary Larson, the author and cartoonist of The Far Side. We have Night of the Crash Test Dummies, where all the crash test dummies are coming to life and putting their operators through the same tortures they put them through. And it came from the dark side, where you have a cow that's kind of attacking the city like Godzilla, but I guess you can call him Cowzilla. And if you don't know what the darks, uh, the far side is, uh, I can show you a few, uh, a few little cartoon cells here. Let's see. Oh, this is funny. Because uh, the way his style of humor was is it was just like a wacky take on reality. And um, you have a mother telling her kid, saying, if they're, if they're monsters moving in next door, Danny, you just ignore them. The more you believe in them, the more they'll try to get you. But there literally are monsters, like, unloading a moving fan. So it's not his imagination. You know, it's like... It's, it's, it's really happening, so that, that's really cool. So if, you, if you've never heard of uh, The Far Side or anything like that, I highly suggest that you check it out. It's a really great uh, comic strip. And I also picked up a bunch of uh, comic books as well. Uh, this first one here, this is an independent comic by Renegade Press, and it's called Revolver Fantastic Fables. This is from 1986, and it has a lot of really cool science fiction stories in here, and if you don't know, or you've never seen independent comics, a lot of them are uh, just in black and white, because usually they don't have the money to pay for somebody to ink the, uh, the comics, but it gives a really nice contrast to it. And the reason why you see a lot of independent comics is because in the 60s and 70s, the comics code was very strict about what you could put into comics and what you couldn't, and uh, you couldn't show like any controversial themes like you know violence death drugs things like that so a lot of people wanted to make more mature um comics you know that were still good not like obscene or anything but just cover more you know uh adult issues and therefore independent comics were born um, a lot of them are worth quite a bit of money i don't believe that one is but others like the not brand Eck um series of comics that was a spoof on Stan Lee and the Fantastic Four with characters like the Incredible Bulk. Um, those are worth a little bit of money. Um, so moving along, I have a couple of toy themed comics. This is uh, Mantech Robot Warriors. And Mantech was a series of toys that came out in the very early 80s that were uh, these action figures that you put into robotic costumes that had upgradable armor and helmets that they could switch out with their uh, other counterparts. And um, it's a pretty uncommon toy line, and it didn't really do very well because there was a lot of competition with uh, He-Man, uh, with Transformers, uh, you know, G.I. Joe, you know, so it just kind of fell in between the cracks. But it's kind of like if you took um, Centurions and um, I'm trying to think of, like, of another line that would be similar to it. Um, maybe like Centurions and He-Man, I guess that's the best way to describe it. And it's just, you know, I don't think it, it could, it really couldn't compete with a lot of the bigger toys that, you know, had uh, TV shows and stuff. And um, also, I got off my buddy Nazar. Uh, this is another Star Wars comic to add to my collection. Love the art style of these. Uh, this is from like the late 70s, early 80s. Paid only two bucks for this, but really cool. It's always weird, too, how you see, like, Luke's lightsabers red. I never got that. I don't understand why they just didn't make it the correct color. But they're always, like, not the right colors of Obi-Wan or uh, Vader or Luke. Like, they're always an off color, which is weird. And then I also picked this other one up, too. This is uh, another toy comic, uh, The Air Raiders, which uh, is commonly mistaken for Ring Raiders or Sky Commanders or something like that. But the, uh, the Air Raiders were just a very generic toy line. Um, with just, like, these little spaceships that had, you know, guys in costumes that would, you know, just shoot lasers at each other. And, and it was just so generic that it never really did very well. And it's a really forgettable uh, toy line. But still cool to see a comic of it. 
Uh, also, I got from my buddy Dan. These were free, he gave to me. These are uh, from the Muppet movie. They're uh, picture cards. And I believe that you would have cut these out of, a, of uh, maybe like the box for the movie or toys, like plush, plush animals. And uh, there's a lot of cool ones too. Got like Kermit the Frog in his director's chair. Uh, I got like Kermit and Miss Piggy. One of the guys, this is, what's his name? Zoot from the Dr. Teeth Band. So really cool. Gives has that cool Jim Henson Muppet style of the late 70s. I uh, also picked up some magazines. These are really awesome. Uh, these are WWF magazines from 1992 90, and 1993. Uh, here we got a WWF Wrestling Spotlight on the Ultimate Warrior. And a lot of cool pictures in here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. That's awesome. And the other two I got here. We got one with Undertaker versus Nails. Now they have really cool adverts in here too for um, like WWF merchandise. That's really corny and cool to see. And with Shawn Michaels as he was getting ready to uh, wrestle for the World Championship heavyweight title. So these are really cool. They were all three bucks a piece. Uh, also picked up for 50 cents this little Legend of Zelda Link keychain. Uh, I got this little button from Dutch Wonderland in Lancaster, PA. Uh, it's a really neat little amusement park that I went to when I was a kid. And uh, it's out in the Amish country, so you have like some kind of um, like uh, country, I guess, themed rides. There's like a cow you can milk where like water comes out of the udders. And they have cars that you can ride on that are old-fashioned Model T. Instead of go-karts, they're like Model T cars. Uh, there's a, um, a paddle wheel boat that you can ride on um, out in the river. So, you know, if you have kids or whatever and you're in, ever in the Lancaster area, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a really fun amusement park. Um, also, I picked up another... Uh, let's see. Well, I guess... Uh, too late now. He was not really a miscellaneous. I should have had him in my toys category. But this is another uh, Savage Mondo Blitzer. And he's really cool. He's a rhinoceros with like a big uh, machine gun. And he kind of looks like, uh, like Bebop or whatever from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I also picked up this old Pez dispenser. This is from, I think, 1967. And it's a Mickey Mouse Pez dispenser. It's missing the nose, but that's not uncommon. They come off quite a bit. That's probably worth uh, at least a good 10 or 20 bucks. It's pretty rare to see the old ones like that. I uh, also got some cassettes. I uh, got The Who, Bass Dances, an album I've never heard of. And that's really weird grammar. That just sounds bizarre. Face Dances. It sounds like crazy talk. Uh, got Get Out of My Room by Cheech and Chong, which is awesome. These were all like 30 cents each. They were really cheap. And Billy Idol, Charm Life, another one that I've never heard of before, but I'm sure I'll, I will like. Um, also got this little finger puppet guy. Whoops, kind of jumped there. And I had one of these when I was a kid, but he was small and yellow. And this, I think, is from the 70s. I just love the color of the skin and the designs on the face and everything. Just a goofy little friendly monster. Uh, very cool. I forget who made him, but he's a, he's a pretty uncommon toy. That was like $2. And then I got these two cartoon character pencils. I got this one that's Alf. And on the front it says, I'm a people alien with his hands folded under his face. And this really rare Thundercats pencil with a lion -O topper on it, which I've never seen anything like this. So this is probably worth a good 10 20 or even more because it's licensed. 
I uh, also found something pretty interesting. Oof. Found a bunch of um, bed sheets, which is really cool. First couple ones are from Star Wars. This is uh, The Empire Strikes Back. And then we got the Star Wars A New Hope. This is the regular sheet. Yeah, I don't know how much you guys would be able to see of that. And then also this really awesome Got it the wrong way. <laughs> this really cool Pac-Man sheet. So pretty cool. Alrighty. And let's see, we'll do some Star Wars stuff now. I got this from my buddy Mike. He gave this to me for free as a uh, repair project to use for parts and everything, so I can't turn that down. Very awesome. Old vintage Kenner B-Wing. Also got this uh, for $2. Lando Calrissian 12-inch figure. And one of his boots are mismatched, but other than that, he's in perfect shape. Uh, missing the gun, but he's got his wrist communicator and everything, so he's in really nice shape. And uh, this little vehicle here, um, this is another Kenner vintage vehicle. I traded in some board games I didn't need and got this for free. Uh, this is the AST-5, where uh, this was uh, one of Jabba the Hutt's guards, Klaatu. This was his ship, or at least he was seen using it. And uh, you open up this little door here, which kind of looks like a coffin, kind of creepy. You flip up the main compartment, it makes that neat little clicking noise. And you can move the guns, and it's in like a walker mode. And you can also flip it up like this, and then it's a spaceship. So again, that was cool for free, can't complain about that. And finally, Star Wars related, I picked up uh, Size Snoodles. This was 12 bucks. That completes my Max Rebo band set. So glad to have that. And also got a lot of uh, Masters of the Universe stuff too. Picked up the Cyber Sled. I got this in a lot of toys, um, like the Lion-O pencil and some other stuff. Like everything for seven bucks. So this was like 50 cents or a dollar. And it's one of the harder Masters of the Universe toys to find because it detached from the original vehicle. So this always got lost. Uh, you see like Man-at-Arms or He-Man, they would fly around on this and, you know, shoot down other enemies. But it's a pretty hard piece to track down. I don't think, I don't think it's worth too much in its current condition, but it's still pretty hard to find. Um, and also, I did a review on these recently, the He-Man Masters of the Universe uh, collectible erasers. This is Skeletor, but he was in the same lot, so he was like 50 cents and he's still on the card. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think. And then I also picked up Tila. I needed her. She was two bucks. Didn't have her, so not just have any of her weapons or anything, but still pretty good for two bucks. And I also got a bunch of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff last month as well. Got this very uncommon uh, we wish you a turtle Christmas, and this is from the uh, the people that did the live action shows where like they would sing and dance, so they did a Christmas video, which is a little scary, um, but uh, still pretty cool. I mean, it's really goofy, Ninja Turtles Christmas. And speaking of the Ninja Turtles, I realized I didn't have any of the original four Ninja Turtles, so I picked them up in a trade with Dan, uh, got all of them for nothing with, the, you know, just doing an even, even swap. And uh, I got, well, of course, you got to know who I got. If I got all four, I got Donatello. Leonardo, I picked up his weapons uh, elsewhere for only a buck. They're from the 2003 figure, but he looks pretty good. And 
uh, Michelangelo. He doesn't have the right nunchucks, they're from a later figure, but he still looks good. And Raphael. And he already, I already had that weapon, I don't have his original size, they're very hard to track down. Alright, uh, I also got some Transformers as well. Um, this, I got the rest of the parts that I needed to finally finish my G1 Bruticus. So I got those off of Scottish Mike, if you guys see any of Nazar's photos, uh, videos on um, Nostalgic. So I gotten Vortex off him in June, and then I got the chest piece, the head piece, the gun, and one of the feet uh, for 10 bucks. And he's, his other foot's mismatched, but at least he can all be assembled. So that's really cool. Or actually, no, 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 I didn't pay 10 bucks. We did a swap for this. Totally forgot about that. I um, also got this guy here, paid five bucks for him. This is Blot, one of the Terracons that forms Abominus. Uh, I got this guy here, uh, his name is Demolisher, and he was one of the, uh, I think, McDonald's Happy Meal toys with the Transformers Armada series. And he's like a tank, if you push his guns on the front, his gun comes off. There's a whole bunch more of them, too. They can actually uh, all fit together to form a combiner. And then this guy is a... Uh, this is a Micromaster. They're really tiny. They're not the Mini Spies. They're a whole different line in the G1 line. And he's a little ambulance. And also, I picked up a G1 Snarl for 7 bucks. I already had a G2 Snarl. This guy was missing some parts, so I was able to piece him back together. Only 9 bucks now. My Dinobots collection is complete. He's missing one scale on the back, but other than that, he looks great. And very cheap. You're not going to be able to find a G1 Snarl for only 9 bucks. And also in the same type of vein, I guess, I uh, picked up Copter from the GoBots line. He's missing his blades, but I think he was five bucks. Uh, he's a very hard little GoBot to find, especially with the helicopter blades. He's one of the more sought-after ones in the line, one of the original, like, ten. And I also got, I got, now this is what I was confused with. I got these from Scottish Mike as well. These I actually did pay ten bucks for. Uh, that completes my collection of my Street Fighter, G.I. Joe, three and a quarter figures, all except for Zangief. Uh, we got Vega. And Dalsim. So, very cool that I was able to pick those up. Also got a couple of muscle figures. This little guy with the horns. And this, like, samurai-looking dude. And those were all bundled in with those other toys that I got as well. Uh, this guy was also part of the same bundled lot. If you saw my last one of my last videos on the other world, this is Lord Zemo. I was able to clean him up really nice. He was in bad shape when I found him. And from my buddy Dan, I got another Robotech figure to add to my collection for $2. So I have a very small Robotech collection, so I'm glad to add that to it. And I also got a bunch of Hot Wheels stuff. First thing were these two here. This is a Corgi Jr.'s 007 James Bond Lotus E-Spirit car. I don't know what Bond movie that's from. I want to say Tomorrow Never Dies, but I'm not really sure, so if you guys can help me out with that. And this other uh, little Hot Wheels car, this is called the Flame Runner. That's the flames and the laser guns on the front. Very cool looking design there. I love any of these with the space designs on them. They're really neat. And these two, these complete my Speed Demons collection. First off is Rodzilla, which is probably the hardest one to find. It's Godzilla as a, uh, as a dragster. He looks awesome. He can move his head around, too, so that way he can be in two different positions. I like him better the other way, because he's nice and big. 
And thanks, sir. He's an alligator with really big teeth and red eyes. So that completes my Hot Wheels Speed Demons collection. And finally, for the Hot Wheels, this is Ertl. This is uh, a Blade Runner car, which how cool is that? I never knew something like this existed. That's the Blade Runner logo on the front. And it uh, just looks great. That was also in that other lot of toys that I picked up. All right, so that'll pretty much do it for toys. Let's uh, check out some video games that I picked up over the past month. First thing, I got these two uh, electronic handheld games here. Uh, this is Split Second. And it's kind of like a puzzle game. I believe the batteries are still in it. Yeah, there we go. And what you would do... is there's a, it shows you the maze for like a half a second, and then you have to figure out like how to uh, navigate the maze in order to get into the little box up at the top. And uh, it's all based on how quickly you can do it, which is why it's called Split Second. That's a fairly uncommon little handheld. And this one's pretty hard to find too. This is by Tomy. This is called Blip. And this was a digital version of Pong, but it's, I mean, more mechanical than digital. And you would hit each button on the side here to try to guess where the little red dot would appear next. And then you would have, you know, you'd have a little game of Pong going on. And this works great. It's missing the battery cover. But uh, it's amazing that all the mechanics and everything work in there. And it really looks like, like a video game you'd play on the TV, and yet it's doing it with gears and little plastic films. So that's that's pretty amazing that all that works, you know, after like 30 years. That's crazy. And also got some stuff for the Atari and the Commodore. Uh, first thing, oh yeah, those were four bucks a piece, the handheld games. Uh, this is Jack Attack for the Commodore 64. I picked that up for two bucks. That's apparently pretty uncommon. This goes for like 15 or 20. I didn't really know that. I just thought it was cheap and thought it was cool, so I picked it up. Uh, and then for the Atari 2600, I got Gangster Alley for 5 bucks, which is pretty uncommon. That's a really fun game. Uh, the Telegames version of Superman. This is the white label variant. This is really, really rare. This was only a dollar. That's actually a pretty fun game. And the uh, Sears Telegames version of Space Combat. That was also a dollar. Moderately uncommon, nothing really special. And I picked up a bunch of Game Boy Advance games as well. These first two, I paid $4 for the two of them. Got Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3. And Donkey Kong Country 3. And these next four, I paid 10 bucks for the lot. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got uh, Crash and Spyro Super Pack. Mario Kart Super Circuit. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. And Kirby, Nightmare in Dreamland. And these next two games are really, really cool that I picked up. Uh, they're for they're five and a quarter inch floppy disks for old PCs. Uh, so the first one here is Top Gun. I know you guys can get a better look at the disc. There you go. And it came with the manual as well. Uh, this is super rare. Uh, this is the Spectrum Holobyte Super Tetris and Wordtress playable demos disc that would have came with the original Tetris Red Box edition. So this would have been inside of that box as they're like advertising for their other new games that are coming out. And uh, you know, that's, that's incredibly, incredibly rare, because the addition of Tetris in the red box by itself is already hard to find. So finding that is just amazing. That's incredible that I picked that up. 
Uh, let's see, so moving on to some other stuff here, I also picked up, I think that's it for video games, picked up uh, this really cool board game here called Dungeon for only two bucks, and it's like an independently uh, done, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons board game, and as you can see the artwork on here is all hand drawn, very, very nice, and uh, the game board looks really cool too. And it's just cool that, like, you know, a small company took the time to go ahead and, you know, try their hand at the Dungeons & Dragons theme. And the board's all, like, hand-drawn. Yeah, just really cool. So I'd like to actually try that out with some friends at some point. That looks like fun. Alright, so now on to my finds of the month. Uh, my first find of the month would be this. This is unbelievably rare, and I know I say that a lot, but I am not kidding with this. This is a Blip, the video games magazine. This is a Marvel comic that's actually a video game magazine. So that technically makes um, Atari and ColecoVision, makes them Marvel canon, because they are officially printed by Marvel. They have a whole bunch of consoles there, produced by Atari. And you just have tons and tons of articles on video games of the time. Like there's a, a whole two-page pullout on River Raid for the Atari 2600 with TV screenshots. And on the next page you have a whole another two-page pullout on uh, Cuber. When this was a new arcade machine, how crazy is that? That people had never heard of Cuber before, that blows my mind. You have other really cool articles in here. Another Atari game, Real Sports Tennis. And it's just neat to see the screenshots. That's amazing they were able to capture that. And in the back, probably my favorite thing, you have this whole article on handheld games, like the Mini ColecoVision arcades, the Game & Watch games. Uh... I don't know if they covered any Tandy in here, but it's still really cool. All the little handheld digital games. So that's really neat. And that was 50 cents. And finally, that is going to bring me to my find of the month for July. And that is none other than, ta-da, a complete inbox Crossfire game. I already had one of these loose, but I could not believe that I came across this. I only paid two dollars for it. And if you guys aren't aware of what Crossfire is, it's it's really known for this really ridiculous advertising commercial from the 80s. This is like from 85 to 87, I think the game came out. And uh, has these two kids in like leather jackets and denim jackets, and they're playing the game in like this post-apocalyptic world where like there's these giant uh, gates and fences surrounding them, and it's like an arena. Like, there's all these other kids, like, cheering and, like, you know, just going crazy. And there's this, uh, like, heavy metal hair band music playing in the back where they're singing, they're like, Crossfire! And it's, they're shooting, they have these guns, they're shooting these marbles and trying to get these other little pieces into their ends. And the entire time, like, they're just, you're hearing that, like, 80s hair metal music. And uh, the, the, at the end, the other kid shoots the other marble into, like, you know, the, the other opponent's goal. And then the other kid, like, flies off into outer space on one of the marbles, like, wearing, like, a black leather jacket and sunglasses. And it's, it's just so ridiculous. Like, if you've never heard of this, you've never seen the commercial, um, do yourself a favor. Look it up on YouTube. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's, it's definitely famous for being, like, one of the most crazy toy commercials, like, bar none from the 80s, and of all time. I mean, they've actually re-released, uh, I think in, like, 2012, they re-released the Crossfire game. That's how epic that the commercial is, that, like, 20 years later, they re-released it with new packaging. So, yeah, for two bucks, that, that's pretty cool, because this usually sells for about 50, um, complete in box, and, uh, sometimes as high as 75 to 100 bucks, so that's that's a really good find. Could not believe I came across that. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for my flea market and thrift store pickups for July. So like I always say, definitely make sure to, you know, 
comment down below about what you guys are seeing out there, what flea markets you're going to, uh, what you're finding, what experiences that you're having. You know, definitely check out the King of Retro homepage on Facebook and share all your stories and photos uh, with me there. And make sure to check me out on Twitter as well at 8 Brian, so you can always catch up and be the first to know on everything that I'm up to. So until next month, guys, take care and happy hunting. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.